Hello, everyone, and welcome to Amy's Knit Lab. My name is Amy Gilles, and I am the owner and creative director of La Bien Aimé, based here in Paris, France. This is my YouTube channel where I talk about yarn. And in the past, I've hosted some virtual knit nights um, around my book, Worsted. And, and now I am starting a new series of conversations with knitters. I am starting this new series out by talking with the designers, specifically from my new book, Neons and Neutrals. I am joined here with my communications assistant, Julia Taylor. Hi, Julia. Hi. We're filming in our office. So Julia is literally right over there. And we are bringing back our virtual events because people have been asking for them. And we really miss doing these. So Julia, what's on your needles today? So a little surprise. I mean, maybe not a surprise when this airs, but you know, um, this is a little bandana if that's what we're calling it, I think it is, um, that you designed, Amy. <laughs> yes. So this will technically be my second design on Ravelry. My first pattern is on Ravelry right now, and it's a single color brioche cowl, and it's a free pattern. You can download it. And I am making a knitted bandana. And so um, if you know me well, I always like to wear bandanas, and I have these bandanas that I wear around my neck, and I thought, let's make a knitted version. And so Julia's testing my pattern. I'm working on my third iteration, kind of making a, a Fady Marley version of oh, it. I love it. Um, my first iteration was this one where I just did some kind of impromptu intarsia on the sides. The second one, I just finished this last weekend where I just did crazy intarsia all over the place. It's so much fun. It is so much fun. So hopefully by the time this episode is out, the pattern will be on Ravelry and you guys can make your own knitted bandanas. Mm. I'm right at the halfway point on mine. I almost have all of my increases and I've been doing, I've never done intarsia before. So I've just been trying it out so this weekend I just experimented it is so much fun it, it is really so is. easy <laughs> it is really easy let's try to get everyone knitting in Tarja <laughs> all right so I would like to introduce my guests I have four special guests with me two of them are designers from my book Neons and Neutrals and I would like to bring forward the first designer Cecilia Compachero. hi Cecilia hi Amy how are you doing I'm great. How are you? Great. This is the design that Cecilia made for my book, Neons and Neutrals. As you can see, it's right here behind me, and I'm wearing the dark version from the book today. <laughs> Cecilia, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself to my YouTube channel. So I um, I live in, in uh, Silicon Valley, which is near San Jose, California. And I have been a knitter for a long time and I worked in high tech for a long time. And in um, 2009, when I was working full time in high tech, I had this crazy idea about a way to knit textured fabric that I call sequence knitting. <clears throat> and uh, long story said, two books later, I now um, retired from high tech and I'm full time uh, focused on developing new stitch patterns and, and ways to knit. That's incredible. Before we dig into sequence knitting, because I do want to ask you about that, can you tell us how you how your knitting story began? So I um, I knit uh, as a teenager in Riverside, California, which is a very very hot place, mm. and and I was fascinated by knitting. A, a friend's mother taught me how to knit. She was a very um, she was a psychiatrist who had gone to Harvard. She's a very smart person. And she made these beautiful, beautiful sweaters for my 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 friend, her daughter. Um, so she kind of got me curious about it. But I was always heavy and knitting patterns never were in my size. Mm -hmm. So I immediately had to begin thinking about not only how do you knit, but how do you also engineer things that can fit? And so I spent many years knitting it with almost no results that I had to show for it all. I have to say, I never quite crack the nut of how to make something that worked. And then when I went off to college and graduate school, I kind of put it in the back burner. And then in the early 2000s, a friend wanted to go to a stitches in Oakland. And, mm -hmm. and it was just this eye opening, oh my goodness, you know, knitting is alive in America. And I became obsessed all over again and plowed through all of Elizabeth Zimmerman's books and started going to becoming a, a student at every event I could get to. 
and becoming re-obsessed with knitting. And I focused then on accessories because I didn't have to worry about fit and uh, started to have a lot more success. Well, tell us about sequence knitting. So you've written two books about this subject. I've written two books. The first book is called Sequence Knitting. And the idea of sequence knitting is you take a sequence of stitches like knit two, purl two, or knit eight, purl four, and you repeat them according to a rule. I, I sometimes say you repeat them in a brain dead way and texture happens. <laughs> you, you treat the front and back side of the knitting the same because you're just following a rule. And, um, you know, it's pretty simple if you're making one by one ribbing, which is sequence knitting. But if you start to make the sequence more interesting or the rule more interesting, you can create many, many fabrics beyond the even ribbings that are super interesting. And I'll show a few examples um, later in my swatching on my journey to design. Yes, reflect. we're going to talk about your design reflected. Um, I love that because while I was out on tour, I was telling people about sequence knitting and a lot of people discovered who you were because they didn't know what sequence knitting was. And I told them that it's such an easy meditative way to knit as well, because you have very easy stitch pattern to memorize, you know? Yeah. The stitch patterns often fit on a little disc of paper that I pinned in my knitting. So I think that maybe simple. your pattern is the shortest one. Absol it absolutely <laughs> is. It fits on, on one page, which yeah. makes the publisher very happy. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I really, I love it. Um, and, and I think once people kind of get it, they, they sort of get hooked. Now, my second book was about color, not about sequence knitting, mm -hmm. but it was specifically about color that you can create by holding strands together. And it's called Making Marls. And when you uh, and I talked about your concept for this book, it could not have been more appropriate because it's all about uh, mixing bases and putting strands together. Yeah, I had you in mind when I was thinking about making the book because I thought that you would be a designer that was a perfect fit for this book. Um, considering the marling that you've done, I've been familiar with your work on that. The sequence knitting, I knew about it, but then I don't know. It just took this wrap that you made to the next level. Honestly, it is such a beautiful piece. And I would love for you to tell us a little bit about your inspiration for Reflected. Yeah, well, maybe maybe, um, maybe I can... Um start and should I tell me my design journey and how I got why don't you start with the design together. journey and what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a photo while you're talking and okay. then we'll go into your swatches because we would love to see those two right afterwards so I um I you know we talked about when we first had our first conversation we talked about wanting to um combine yarns together to make a new fabric and it didn't even have to be all your brand. It could be your brand with another brand uh, or some mix. And so I, uh, the first thing we did was you sent me some yarn samples for me to play with. And you specifically sent me some lace samples. You sent me Helix and Felix because when you're putting strands together, you're obviously making a thicker yarn. And I really like fabrics to have drape, especially a shawl really needs to have drape. So you need to start with pretty thin yarn if you're going to double them or triple them so that you end up knitting a weight that isn't too heavy. Mm -hmm. um, and I have some yarns that are Japanese yarns that I have loved for a long time. And I had an idea. Well, I'll show you. I, I played with silk mohair. I played with the Japanese silk noil. I played with, um, uh, let's see, I played with, golly, Felix and Helix together. And I played with two Felixes and one silk mohair. So I played with a range of mixes. And then once I had a fabric that I liked and a weight that I liked, then the design came after that. Well, that's incredible. We would love to see some of the swatches that you made to land on the final selection of yarn. So these four swatches are, I call these calibration swatches. And I talk about this in Making Marls because in Making Marls, you're inventing your own fabric and you don't have a ball band to tell you what needle size to use. So then I always start by getting to know a yarn or a new, a new yarn I've invented by putting strands together by picking the needle size that I think is right. And then I go usually down two or three and up two or three. And so this is five needle sizes, five needle sizes. This one is six and this one is six. So playing with needle size and mix. And here I have Felix with um, Ito Sensei, which is a silk mohair. Here is Felix with Helix. Here is Felix with the Ito Kinu. 
And here it's Felix with uh, two Felixes with um, silk mohair. Oh. And if you look at the four of these, the thing that really I think jumps out is this one is a textural marl that really shows. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really loved the life of the textural marl that I got by putting the silk noil yarn with the beautiful soft Felix yarn, uh, because you can see that the marl is subtle, but it has a fleck to it, almost like a tweed that's just beautiful. And if you could feel it, it feels beautiful. It just feels good. So I, I this, this exercise, first of all, for any of these mixes, I now have a little library where I could go back and pick a needle size because I have my little, my little round paper tag that I can also write my sequence knitting pattern on. Um, but this helps me pick the needle size. And so I, I, um, I ended up going with this one. And so that was my fabric. And then the next thing I had to do is I had to decide on stitch pattern. And so I played with a couple different ideas. I played with um, just a simple box and box pattern. And I was using here some pinks uh, in different colorways, just, just uh, squares. Um, squares are really nice when you marl because marls tend to look vertical streaky with stockinette and horizontal streaky with reverse stockinette. And you can play with that look, which is that's something I really like. I also played with a more interesting sequence knitting pattern. Ooh. Maybe I'll put it up. And trying to see nice. how did I feel about it and something with a little more texture in it. And this is a good example of sequence knitting. You see it's it's the same on both sides, wow. which is often what happens in sequence knitting. So you can really play with that. But I ultimately decided that these patterns, I they they didn't show off that vertical horizontal stockinette quality enough. So I wanted to go with a bigger pattern. And that's when I went to parallelograms. And in a parallelogram, you, um, you're really playing with um, mm. a bi a knitting on the bias. And you can see that you get these nice long expanses of stockinette and reverse stockinette. And you get the lines, this sense of line moving with them. And then it really became a challenge to just figure out what colors do I want to work with. And I knew <laughs> Flora Morganite had to be part of the story. <laughs> and I also, I also really like striping with marls. And the thing about striping with marls that's really interesting, and you can see it here, is it uh, doesn't show on every stitch. It almost is a fleck. It's an intermittent fleck. And what that does is it tones color way, way, way down. So even a really strong color like Flora Morganite, which you can see here in pure skein form, when you when you do a single marl stripe, it becomes much more subdued. So then the question was just how to handle the striping. And this was a swatch where I played with, you know, heavier striping, thinner striping, a little embroidery striping, you know, just all different kinds of striping. But now on this parallelogram where I've got these really nice stockinette, reverse stockinette biased columns, and I ultimately decided that um, a double stripe, which I think you can see here mm -hmm. at the top, that double stripe was where I ended up because I yeah. really like the double stripe. And the problem with the double stripe is you can't carry the yarn because it needs to be at least four rows apart. So you can't carry the yarn. So I, I came up with a way to do a little embroidery detail, which I think this, <laughs> this swatch actually has. You see, it's just whip stitched at the side. It's brilliant. It's a really I love that little... technique little nub at the end. I want to do it for everything where you have Me to cut the, cut the yarn. That was amazing. I'm always fascinated with your swatches and the thought process behind it. Everyone on tour asked about this. They were like, <laughs> what is that? Is that part of the design? I'm like, it's part of the design. And it's the way to weave the ends in. And I think it's brilliant. And it's, it's easy. Way. It's so easy. Yeah, I love that. I love that so much. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is how you came up with the shape for reflected. How did you come up with the shape? And while you're talking, I'm going to kind of just hold the shawl up so people can actually see. Yeah. So I've done a lot of patterns that are a single parallelogram and a single parallelogram can be a beautiful scarf, but I really wanted the feeling of a generous shawl. And there's a lot of shawl shapes out there, but I started just playing with paper with just cutting paper and cutting parallelogram shapes in paper. And I realized that this mirrored mirrored parallelograms was first of all, very, very sequence knitting friendly. So it was a very simple design in terms of the knitting process. 
but also that very simple form I mean, it's very wearable. Look at all the different ways you can style it's it. It's right? so wearable. Like I will <laughs> style it. So when people pick up this sample, they look at it and I said, put it on. And I said to him, Cecilia has created a shawl that's not going to fall off your shoulders. I remember this was something that you mentioned when we were discussing the design process, because that's one of the reasons why I don't knit a lot of shawls is because they always fall off the shoulders, unless I'm going to be knitting like a huge thing. But the shape of this is so brilliant. So sometimes I'll be wearing it just around the office. And I tell people like you could put a belt on around it like this. Look, comes okay. down along the back. I shift the triangle to the to my shoulder. Right here. And wear it like this and then I can throw this corner up and it's like I've got a coat for the interseason which is perfect for right now in Paris because you don't really need a coat you don't really want to wear a bulky sweater and so this is just the perfect amount of coverage that you need and I love it and the minute people put this shawl on they're like sold they're like I want to trust the sequence knitting is so easy mm -hmm. yeah it's really easy and and I, the thing I'm, I'm loving watching you style it is I'm always thinking about the fabric and the quality of the fabric the feel of the drape and it's just, you know, it just looks beautiful on you the way the folds, you know, it just naturally has these nice folds and drapes. It's really nice. The, the, the usage of the silk with the wool lace together really does create this very unique drapey, but dry fabric. And it's mm -hmm. nice. It's a good alternative to using mohair silk or alpaca silk. Some people don't really like that fuzzy yarn. And I know that mohair is like having a moment right now. Alpaca silk's having a moment, but this is really nice to have a shawl that can be drapey without using a fuzzy yarn. Yeah. It actually, if there's any itch factor in the wool, you've now taken half the wool away by, by holding two strands together. So it actually reduces any itch factor by putting the silk with it. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Um, so we talked about, so we started to touch base on the yarn. So you chose to use Ito Kinu, which I have here and Felix together for the main colors. And then for the contrast stripe, you used Floor Morganite. Yes. And that's for the original that you can see right here. And even yes. from a distance, you see that little pop of neon, but it's not overwhelming. It's it's a super great. It's actually following right in the concept of the book of mixing neutrals and neons and neutrals together. Um, I got inspired because after you told us about this yarn, I went ahead and made a base um, for myself, a silk tweed base, which we are going to, by the time this comes out, we'll probably have released. All right. So, and it's called La Bienname Silk Tweed. I like very descriptive names for my yarns. <laughs> and it was what we used for the dark version. And so we have a base now that is a silk noil that's got yeah. like little recycled silk bits inside. Um, it's a little bit thicker than the Ito Kinu. Um, so it creates, so this shawl is actually just a little bit heavier than the original sample. And which is really nice because some people are thinking, we're saying like, do I, what if I have like a heavy lace weight? Can I use that? I'm like, you can absolutely use a heavy lace weight. No problem. Yeah. You can so. put any, any two bases together. You just have to, to either live with whatever gauge you get. If you pick random needle size or go through a process to work it out. Yeah. That's a whole nother episode that we can talk about that. <laughs> 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 All right. So I wanted to ask you, Cecilia, if you could knit one design from Neons and Neutrals, which one would it be? Oh my goodness. I don't remember the name, but I love that one with the little ruffles, the little. Oh, uh, Darta. Uh, let me grab it really quick. So much fun. It's Darta by Inez Sang. One. Yes. yes. So much fun. I'm not so sure I could pull it off, but I love it. <laughs> so, so adorable. Um, I love, I love the embellishments. I love embellishments too. And I think that embellishments like that, where they're like kind of the main part of the design are amazing and also subtle embellishments like on reflected. I mean, I keep coming back to the, the weaving of the ends with the little, the little whip stitch. It's perfect. It's like the perfect little detail one. And everyone notices it too. Everyone yes. picks it up and they look at it and they're like, what is that? So yep. great. Um, do you have anything special that you're working on? Do you have any new projects or anything that you can sneak peek us? Well, I'm working on my next book, um, which probably will come out next year. So it won't be out uh, in this year, but it's um, going to be a sequel to sequence knitting. And it's going to be about doing change ups with sequence knitting to create more interesting stitch patterns. And the, 
the sweater I'm wearing. I don't know if you can. Can you see the stitch pattern I can on that? See it very I told, yeah. Drag my. Oh, nice. Oh, has has a. But you can see here that um, this is actually just based on ribbing. It's based on twelve by twelve and four by four ribbing, and I've just alternated them. So it's like sequence. It's like four sequence knitting patterns interleaved. Wow. So my next gorgeous. book is going to be about this idea and how to uh, expand on that. So it's, well, it's, it's, go ahead. Sorry. W will this be a book of patterns or a book of stitch patterns? Like when it's you have a garment. It's going to be a stitch dictionary, I think. Okay. Okay. That's exciting. And so that's going to come out next year. I'm hoping it will, I'm hoping it will come out next summer and be ready for a, uh, the fall of 24. Ooh, that's exciting. I can't wait. I, I love books and I collect books and I have both of your books. So this will be great to add this one to my collection. Thank you. All right. One last question before we, we bring Brienne forward, where can we find you on the internet, Cecilia? So I have a, a website, which is just www.ceciliacampuchero.com. And uh, I also have a Ravelry group called the Friends of Cecilia Campuchero. I, I have been um, sadly lacking on Instagram. I have an account there and I have great ambition to get my mo my Instagram mojo back. Maybe uh, maybe I will later this year. <laughs> but uh, my website has my events where you can find me. And uh, and I also have a newsletter you can sign up for there where oh, if I'm nice. going to be doing anything special, I'll, I'll let you know. Very nice. Thank you, Cecilia. It was so wonderful chatting with you. I would Thank like you. to bring forward my second guest here, Brienne Moody. Hi, Brienne. Hi there. How are you doing? Good. We're I feel like I, I've gotten such a lesson from Cecilia. I've been just wildly taking notes while she's <laughs> talking here. So I feel like that too. Like when we first started collaborating, I, I learned so much and her books are so informative. I really enjoy them. Um, but I want to talk about you, Brienne. Can you please tell us about yourself and a little bit about your background and how did your knitting story begin? Uh, I'm Brienne Moody. I live in Minnesota in the U.S., uh, very near to the Canadian border. Uh, it's very cold here, which would be a contrast to Cecilia and Silicon Valley there, although I did go to college in uh, Silicon Valley. Um, and my knitting journey started, let's see, so I grew up actually where I live now, and um, it's a real remote area. We didn't have access to um, fashion or anything like that. Um, and so I think I got interested in expressing myself that way, um, from a young age, but would sort of, you know, started, um, with the nineties sort of tearing up t-shirts and sewing things here and there, sewing panels with fabric on the fronts of my jeans, or, um, <clears throat> I worked at a bank for a while or as a waitress and I would always alter my uniform, take it in or take it out or puff the sleeves. Um, and then started falling in love with these sweaters I would see in magazines and not being able to afford them or access them either. That was sort of pre before you could order things easily through the mail. So uh, anyway, um, I think it's interesting listening to Cecilia talk and reading your introduction in your book about expressing yourself through color. I think those of us who are drawn to design, we're trying to solve a problem that we ourselves are facing. And so for me, that was um lack of resources, both um, just being so remote, but also the money to buy a nice sweater. Um, I wanted to learn how to make it. So I taught myself to knit in my early 20s, um, knitted, uh, you know, knitty.com had all those free patterns, but that was before I knew anything about gauge or anything. So I knitted a shrug with all kinds of bobbles and cabling yeah. on both arms. That was my first project was a sweater. And people would say, you're knitting a sweater? Have you never knitted anything else before? And I'm like, no, I want to knit. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. I wore that shrug in my wedding. And it's it's great to look back at it now because it's just a wild kind of maximalist, huge yarn, bobbles, cables, all the things. And, you know, I felt <laughs> I had no idea that it was probably totally off gauge. And um, I doubt I weaved in the end, anything like that. Uh, but I felt this release, this liberation, this ability to suddenly express myself in a whole new way. Um, so that's kind of how I got started. And then uh, when I had children, um, you know, sort of broke again. <laughs> and so I would go to our local um, thrift shop and buy like large men's t-shirts or you could, you used to be able to buy Patagonia as an outdoor mm -hmm. clothing and you used to be able to buy their um, mill ends and you could mm -hmm. like cut up this fabric and make pants and shirts. 
And of course the um, knitting woolen things for, for them was really practical. It's very cold where I live sort of year round. And so sweaters, um, those little pants, the longies, they used to call them hats, booties, all the, the whole thing. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I, I love I love learning this about you. Um, I follow you on social media and it looks like you live in the most beautiful place in the United States. Like, so you are right on the border of Minnesota and Canada. Does the place where you live inspire you in your knitwear design? It definitely does. I mean, certainly out of necessity, really. I mean, wool really works here. It feels really good um, pretty much year round. Uh, and I think it's yeah definitely definitely the um landscape is beautiful and sort of extreme you know it can be very windy and very cold um we're right by uh, lake superior which is a huge freshwater lake um and so that sort of um has its own climate even uh 20 minutes away from me they could be getting thunderstorms or um it could be 70 degrees and it could be very cold down here so yeah, sort of the, these extremes mm -hmm. together, I guess. Tell us a little bit about your design process. So from the beginning, so if you were designing a sweater, what would be like the inspiration? Maybe talk about your last design that you've released. And then after this, I'll ask you about Brienne from Neons and Neutrals. Great. Um, so I, I love to read and I love to listen to audiobooks. So I would say um, often my designs are coming from inspiration from whatever I'm listening to or reading. Uh, my most recent design is a hat that I actually used um, Corey Worsted for. And um, I'm an endurance athlete. And so um, I love to run and uh, was needing sort of a fitted, textured hat. So that's where I was. I guess that doesn't relate to reading, but I was also listening at that time to a podcast about um, people in America who hop trains, which was really <laughs> outside of my experience, but I was, I'm wearing a sweater now that I just designed. And I was thinking if I could just take one sweater on the road, if I knew I couldn't have everything with me, what would that be? I would want it to be a little, um, a little fun and interesting, but also totally practical um, so again, I think I'm always, always these two extremes, always the contrast, which is why I think uh, neons and neutrals really appealed to me too. I like to bring those two worlds together to sort of break the rules. This has lace and bobbles on it, which would be impractical for hopping a train, but I <laughs> feel beautiful in it and also warm. So I think that is the kind of thing I would want to take with me if I was pursuing this sort of nomadic experience. Oh, I love that. I love that. So let's talk a little bit about your design, Brienne. So Brienne is, let me just pull it up from my book here, is this beautiful sweater right here. And we showed it in the book in two different yarns, Corey Worsted and Imbue from Brooklyn Tweed. Um, your design proposal caught my attention immediately because we received a whole bunch of them. And on the very first day, we were going through all of them and kind of sorting them by like style, garment, accessory. And then yours came up and we both just stopped and we're like, <laughs> so I'm going to share. You've given me permission to share. I'm going to share here <laughs> on the screen um, Brienne's design proposal and what caught our attention. Can everyone see that? Um she had sketched her design on these cute little rabbits it <laughs> caught my attention. But even before that, we got to it. She had knit a mini version of her sweater for the design submission. And it immediately, I think I thought it was a brilliant idea, mm -hmm. a brilliant idea. So I thought maybe you could talk to us a little bit about um, your design inspiration for Brienne. Sure. Uh, well, I certainly, I loved the paintings that you had put out that really spoke to me. And I would say I'm sort of recovering uh, neutrals lover. I mean, I do love neutrals, but I really love maximalist color and texture. That's what I really like to make. Uh, and so this just um, provided an opportunity to really go for it. I wanted to try to include as many color splashes as I could. And I included those double cuffs, which are sort of a maximalist element. Um, nice deep pockets and this kind of boxy shape. Um, also, the construction is unique going from side to side. It had never worked that way before. And it allowed me to incorporate color in a way that I wouldn't have been able to in a round yoke. I yeah. think the design is really um, kind to different shapes. I think mm -hmm. it's a really 
design. So um, I guess I had all of those ideas in mind. And as soon as I had that idea, I was like, I have no idea how to produce. Is this even possible? <laughs> Is there, I, in spite of my um, loving to sort of go crazy with colors and texture, I'm a total rule follower. And I love that Neons and Neutrals is a rule breaking book completely. Since reading it, I just have so many ideas. And I definitely went about my own design that way. It was sort of scary to even pitch it. But I think knitting that tiny sweater gave me an opportunity to practice all of those techniques. Well, I thought it was a brilliant way to convey your idea. Immediately, I saw exactly what the design was talking about. The side-to-side -side construction, this was the only submission that we got for the book in this kind of construction. Mm -hmm. I, have had, I have seen this before, but like a long time ago on Knitty, you know, like on Knitty.com, I saw some sweaters that were knit from sleeve to sleeve, but I just loved how you incorporated the double cuff. Seriously, is a showstopper. People immediately pick up the cuff and then they look at it. We start the conversation. They try on the cardigan. We're showing, we showed it in the book in two different lengths, cropped and the regular length. And what is so great is that when people choose it for their size, it's a more fitted cardigan. But then when they try on the bigger one, which is the one in imbue, it gives you a different style of cardigan. It's kind of this oversized, comfortable, almost kind of bomber jacket style um, cardigan. And people are like, I actually kind of want to knit two. So they knit one close to their size and then they knit one size up or even two sizes up to get mm -hmm. that kind of oversized, relaxed fit. And then there's the best part, the pockets. I'm all about pockets and knitwear. And I love the side slit pockets that you integrated into this design. I just, I just feel like it has all the little elements that I look for in a garment. And then you played around with color. You did color blocking, color work. Um, and it's just, it, it works really well. For the name of the sweater, um, I made an executive decision to name it after you. Um, I like to, I, I kind of decided with the second book that I would name at least one pattern after a designer in the book. And I really like your first name. I think Brienne is a really pretty name. It makes me think of Game of Thrones. I was just like, when this came through and, and we were talking about names, I reached out to you immediately and asked if it would be possible to name it after you. Because I just think it's a great name for a garment. So that's kind of where the inspiration for Brienne came from. It was me being inspired by Brienne's first name. <laughs> <laughs> that was very fun for me. Um, again, growing up in a remote, teeny tiny town. My name is French. Brienne is French, and it was pretty unusual. I still have teachers that I had all through high school that call me Brian or Bryn or, <laughs> and <laughs> heard that pronunciation. I had never heard that name anywhere else except for Game of Thrones. And what a thrill to have such a strong female character with my same name. I love it so having it in the book is a real treat and sort of a, I don't know, a full circle empowering moment for me because it's sort of been um, at different stages in my life, I would say more of a point of shame. I was even at a conference this weekend and people were saying, how do you say it? And I said, anything's fine. I'll come over, you know, I'll hear you. Anything's fine. You know? So it's nice to have sort of that affirmation of no, no, this is my name. It's a good name. Um, it's a great name. Yeah. It's a great name and it needed to be the name of the design. I mean, I immediately knew that from the beginning when we started working with you, I was like, we should just call this cardigan Brienne. We actually called it the Brienne cardigan the entire time. Yes. Talking about it before we even <laughs> Absolutely. If you could knit something from neons and neutrals, which design would you knit? That is such a tough question. I, um, well, now I'm just going to knit Cecilia's uh, wrap because that was really cool to hear about all of that. Uh, but I was going to say Werbel. I love color work yokes, of course. And that one is such a showstopper. And then I love the idea that she uh, went from fine gauge in the yoke to uh, a larger gauge for the body. I just think that's brilliant. And again, this break the rules knitting, it wouldn't have occurred to me that we had permission to do that. So I love, I love. <laughs> that really um and I love to hear that Cecilia takes uh paper cuts paper to come up with different shapes I really like working with things like that too you know paper towels put together in different ways or sewing together some quick scraps to see how a shape would fit um anything I definitely, really I definitely have taken that advice from Cecilia because when we were co collaborating for the book she had mentioned this to me before and I I'm just starting my designing my designing path right now. And so that has actually been really helpful to cut out 
shapes when I was working on intarsia techniques. I would cut shapes out on a piece of paper and then I would lay it out and be like, okay, so this is the shape that I'm kind of knitting. And it was such a great visual guide. Cecilia, thank you. Actually, two more questions. What are you working on right now? Do you have anything that you can sneak peek us? Yes. So I am working on a second um, version of the sweater I'm wearing right now in gray, but I also, um, I have, this one is in testing. Mm. Um, but I am working on something in La Bienname DK right now that I haven't shown to anyone. And it's a shawl. Wow. Not sure how well you can see it, but what I've done is taken, um, that increased section on one side of the shawl and kept it all in uh, garter stitch, just simple stitches, but I love showing how, um, this variegated yarn looks in different stitch patterns. So I'm trying to, yes. it's simple, but um, kind of special because it shows the different way that the colors look in those different uh, stitch patterns. And so this one is almost done. It'll be ready for testing pretty soon. Ooh, I can't wait to see that one. I Can you hold <laughs> it up again? Because it is true how the variegated yarn does look different across each of the stitch patterns. That's amazing. Mm. All right, we'll have to keep an eye out for that one. That's exciting. So tell us where we can find you on the internet. Sure. I have a website. It's briannemody.com. Uh, but most often I'm sharing things on Instagram, which is also just Brienne Moody. It's pretty easy to find. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brienne. Thank you. All right. Now I would like to bring forward our special guests. We have two test knitters that have joined us, Sabrina and Francis. <laughs> And I'm going to let Julia take over this portion. So we have Frances tested, um, reflected uh, for Cecilia. So I'm going to start by talking to you, Frances. Thank you okay. so much for joining us. It's Good a morning. real pleasure to meet you. Um, could you please introduce yourself to us and tell us who taught you how to knit? Um, my name is Frances White. And I um, learned how to knit by teaching myself out of a craft book um, while I was in elementary. And I, I primarily taught myself how to knit and purl, but my mother is a fabulous crocheter, mm -hmm. uh, or she was a fabu fabulous crocheter. And she always used to have her... Um, her crocheted uh, um, items, you know, throughout our house. It was during the late fifties, early sixties, when you know they uh, crocheted doilies and mm -hmm. and large bedspreads in the small with the uh, the small thread cotton. Mm -hmm. And um, and I've always liked. Um, to do little crafty things. Anyway, I uh, did that at, in elementary school and then didn't do anything with it. And then um, I, I worked as a nurse and um, at a children's hospital and across the street, we had a knitting shop. And I wandered over there one day and I just fell in love with <laughs> all the yarns and the colors. And I, I picked up knitting immediately. Um, and I just, again, I was pretty, I was self-taught mm -hmm. and I just started out making sweaters, didn't do, you know, <laughs> the scarves or, you know, or hats to start out with. I just kind just, of you dove in. right in. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, that's how I got started with knitting essentially. Mm -hmm. And how long ago was that? Oh, a long <laughs> time ago. <laughs> I have a question. I um, think I'm, since you yes. learned, you learned knitting from a book. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Because my mom learned knitting from a book and then she taught me. How do you knit? Do you knit English style or continental? English. Yes. Me too. Me too. And that's because my mom said that's, that's the way I learned from a book. So I don't know, maybe like most people, when I ask them, that's how they learn is that you're learning mm. style from the book, from a book. So I did teach, well, I did teach uh, myself how to um, do continental knitting, but you know, when I was in nursing school, I, um, 
everybody was crocheting at the time. And so we did the granny blankets. And so it was, you know, is it was a good transition for me to go from throwing to continental mm. knitting because you crocheted with yeah. I'm right-handed, but mm -hmm. I'm the same way. I'm exactly the same way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then could you please tell us how you became a test knitter? Well, um, Cecilia came out with her book, Sequence Knitting. And um, I was, at the time, I was a part owner in a knitting store that was, has now closed called Got Your Goat. And I invited Cecilia to come teach a, um, uh, a class there. And uh, when we were finished, I was so interested in what she was doing. I asked if she needed somebody to, um, you know, uh, knit her designs or swatches or whatever I can do to help her out, I would, you know, I'd be glad to do it. <laughs> and essentially that's how I, and that was about four, four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. That's super because you are actually the one who knit the sample for the light version of, Re of reflected that's behind Amy. Yes. Um, so uh, I I think some pe for some people it's not very clear the difference between being a test knitter and being a sample knitter. Um, so could you please like explain to us when you were knitting reflected, did you test knit it as well or just knit it? I just knit it again. I'm mm -hmm. one of those people who just likes to jump in and <laughs> start knitting the the um, pattern. And I suppose with sequence knitting, there's not too much to to test once you know the sequence the works and the shape works. But you do have to pay attention. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and so could you please tell us what you've been knitting recently? Is there anything you can show us? Actually, I just finished this Lund Lundgren sweater. Ooh. Um, geez, I, um, I'm forgetting the, the gal who, um, designed it. It's um, fine because I can just with the name, I can find it and put it in the notes, which will be below the video. And, um, that's not a problem. I was, um, uh, I had to use some of my stash during the pandemic. So I just started taking, um, some filatura yarn and edition three. I didn't, um, I didn't use different um, yarns in the, the yoke here. I just used dish and three and it just changed colors by itself. And I just love that. That's awesome. I love oh, it. Oh, I'll have to look it up. I haven't heard of it. It's like taking a self-striping yarn and using it for color work. It's like. Oh, yeah, what a great good. idea. Yeah. We used to call that Jacquard Magique in my, <laughs> I had a, when I had a yarn store, I would, I would sell that to people often like. You take the variegated or the self-striping yarn for the color work and just the solid and you just knit the pattern and it just changes color and it, and it just like makes it fun. So we called it magic, magic jacquard, magic color work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you don't have to keep changing yarns, yeah. which makes True. it much easier. Oh, great technique. Okay, and then well, thank you so much. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Frances. No. And then the last thing that I just knit and I just finished it was uh, Whispers by Les Garçons, um, which is a man's sweater. My husband has been bugging me for the last couple of years. <laughs> since I'm in the sweater ah. and I just finished that. <laughs> they do that, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Every, every few uh, years, my husband pesters me for something. Right now, he really, really wants a new scarf. So, and I don't like knitting scarves. So, I'm thinking about the shawl that I could possibly knit for him. So, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Thank you so much, Frances. So, now I'm going to chat with Sabrina. Hi, Hi, Sabrina. Thank you so much Hello. for joining us. Oh, you're very this, welcome. This is not actually our first time meeting because no. we met you. <laughs> Um, so in 2021, when we did those knit nights for Worsted, because you were a test knitter for Andrea. Mm -hmm. And so this time around, you tested the Brienne. I did. <laughs> and it looks awesome. So I'm going to start with the, the questions and then we'll talk about which yarn you used. So 
we know you, but you know, it's been a little while. So could you please introduce yourself to us again and tell us how you uh, learned to knit? Sure. My name is Sabrina Crossley. Um, I'm a mom of three and a chiropractor by day, knitter by all the other times. <laughs> um, I originally started knitting when I met my husband. My mother-in-law taught me. So that was over 20 years now. We've been we've been together. So she taught me right away. Uh, originally, she I'm left-handed. So I tried crocheting at first, but um, I couldn't hold tension in my left hand very well. So she taught me English style, but I would always have to like drop my yarn and loop it around and drop. So uh, a gentleman came to our local yarn store to teach continental knitting. And I picked it right up and I was able to hold tension with my left hand and it was very much intuitive. So since then I can now crochet <laughs> with learning how to tension that. So, um, but mainly my, my mother-in-law was the, the big inspiration, so. We mm. were actually, we go on knitting trips together and that sort of thing. So she's, uh, <laughs> I love her having in my life. So. Wow, oh, that's um, great. Mm -hmm. And she brought you this incredible gift of knitting. She did. She did. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, much to my husband's chagrin with probably the amount of money I spend on it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's a good way to connect <laughs> with, with her and then with others. So I'm mm. very happy to do it. Yeah. And so you've been a test knitter for a while now and you test knit for mm -hmm. a few different designers. Can you tell us mm -hmm. how you became a test knitter and why? So uh, I would say, I think my original test knitting started very early in the pandemic. We, unfortunately, as a chiropractor, I can't do a virtual job. People don't like yeah, being adjusted over the true. internet. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so I had a lot of spare time and um, I think it was Tannis uh, of Tannis Fiber Arts had reached out for testing for a sweater. So I started doing it with her and it just brought such a sense of community when otherwise we couldn't really connect. And after that, I, I took any opportunity I could find. And then as it went on and I was posting projects, I had some designers reaching out to see if I would test it for them. I think uh, a combination of this, my I guess my speed of knitting, but also my size. I think they were looking for people who could who could knit um, larger garments, so to see it on a variety of body shapes. Yeah. But now I find I'm I test knit for uh, specific designers that I've I've been test knitting for a while for. So Andrea Mowry is a big one. Um, Jackie C. Slack, I've knit a few for her. Um, and then there's a few others, uh, mm -hmm. Jamie of Knitosophy. And, and so it's fun. It, it really, it's like mini little cows. Mm. Um, and you get to know the same knitters that, that are involved. And, and, you know, when you see them at yarn shows, you've never met them in person, but <laughs> it, it feels like an old friend. Mm -hmm. So it really provides a good, a good connection and, and a good group uh, to lean on, you know, during hard times when we were stuck at home and, mm -hmm. and had nothing else to do but knit. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um and so let's talk about your brienne yes <laughs> so which yarn did you choose i don't know oh, i, I have I no part know. to play in that <laughs> <laughs> so this is the bien ami cory worsted um this is probably my third or fourth sweater in it i love this yarn um yes. right now in i'm in ontario canada so it's it's about 20 degrees celsius today so i'm a little hot in this yes. one but it's such cozy yarn. It, mm. it doesn't pill. A big part of why I choose yarn like this is I switched over to, to non-superwash yarns because I find with my size, yarn, especially superwash yarn, gets very heavy. It'll stretch on my frame. Yes. So when I switched to, um, to a non-superwash, it, it made a huge difference. And the colors I chose, well, <laughs> I, I really like pink <laughs> and coral. So this is floral morganite. Um, and then uh, with Julia's encouragement, I chose a yellow. So this is yellow book road because I don't wear yellow, <laughs> but they look so good together. So I love yes. it. And um, I love this sweater. I, I've never knit something sideways and it went so fast. You're mm. never stuck on sleeve island at all. Uh, and the double point. cuffs were like, it's oh, true. It's, it's like, wait, I've done the sleeves? No way. <laughs> the sleeves are done. It's like, what? Yeah. And I think I was most excited to knit this double cuff because it was just so much fun. Yeah. So I really Everyone is. And it's your starting point as well. So you're mm -hmm. like, oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I love seaming down the middle because it's got a nice exposed um, seam and it just looks so slick at the back. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. 
and the button band wasn't there wasn't too much to pick or not the button band the the ribbing mm. it wasn't too big so it didn't seem to to take forever which was good mm -hmm. as well yeah I love it it's mm. such a such a great cardigan and I, I love mm -hmm. your your colors um obviously we created Amy's perfect cardigan maybe you would have done <laughs> yeah, Amy, yeah. <laughs> yellow brick road as the main color and fluoro yeah. morganite as the <laughs> I got inspired by yours just... Sabrina definitely I have a third one that's like currently blocking right now it's like it is the... literally <laughs> trying behind me out right there oh, behind I see you. It. oh yeah you can it's see like it I inversed your colors I inversed it and made it a yellow cardigan with pink pop so yes had um Corey Worsted been available and is it Wensley when Wensley, Wensley Worsted? yes Wensley I would have chose the floral morganite in that color because that's you well, you know, I just finished Andrew Maury's Traveler in fully that. floral morganite, and then knit my dog a matching one. But <laughs> <laughs> I love the color. Yes, <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> yes, it's true. When you when you tested this one, I don't think we had released Wensley yet. No, no, we only had yet. Corey. Yeah. yeah, but that's okay. Sometimes I can be a bit more toned down. <laughs> it's good. Regardless. That's like the muted version. <laughs> yeah. It's my professional cardigan. And then my weekend cardigan is is the, you know, the Wensley in Floral Morganite. <laughs> so funny. And so can you let us know what you've been knitting recently? Is there anything yes. you can share with us? I can. So the, the latest finished object was the, the bright hoodie out of Floral Morganite. Um, it's funny, my dog had gone into, we have a puppy who's, she's about 10 months old now. She specifically went in my yarn bag three times to pull out that skein of Flora Morganite in Felix. And I was like, don't you realize this is Paris yarn? Uh, so <laughs> I, it was her way of telling me she needed a matching hoodie. So that's why she got one. Um, but I'm currently, I went on a trip, uh, for a wedding to Punta Cana. So while I was there, I, I started, um, it's a rocket tee by Tannis Fiber Arts, and mm -hmm. it's in her um, her Willow DK base. And mm. shocking, it's pink. Um, <laughs> so I, I knit that one, or I'm knitting that one. It's almost done. I just have to do the finishing. And then I'm testing something for uh, Sabine Kadri. Uh, her, it's the Surrey shirt, but in a V-neck now. So I've been working on that. By the time I think this will be uh posted this might be out but it's in um an alpaca cotton base so just a couple of uh t-shirts mm. for the summer oh nice oh great mm. nice. yes because i get very warm at work so i can't wear many sweaters unfortunately <laughs> mm. well thank you so much for being with us thank you it's always a pleasure <laughs> okay. all right i'm, I'm going to bring everyone forward because i have two questions to ask everyone before we end this this episode here. Um, <clears throat> so some fun questions for everyone. We'll start with Brienne and we'll go around the circle, Brienne, Francis, and then actually we'll start with Sabrina, Francis, Brienne, and then Cecilia. If you were a stitch or knitting technique, which one would you be? Well, um, I love the idea of people picking a really specific stitch. So I'm going to be on that quest now to pick one, but I would say, um, <laughs> I love illustration. That's sort of where all of my designs begin. And so color work is what's most comfortable for me. I like expressing myself that way. Nice color work. We got a lot of those responses yes. too in some previous episodes. That's great. <laughs> Francis. Um, knitting technique, stranded knitting. I like the Knitting. color work. Mm. Very cool. Okay, Sabrina. Um, well, I was going to say color work, but let me <laughs> pick something different. <laughs> uh, I think, honestly, I think I would be brioche because it can be complicated sometimes, but um, otherwise can be bright and colorful and bold and or could be toned down, you know, when I have to be professional. So uh, I would say brioche. Very exciting. And it grows and shrinks. So that's a good one. So, sometimes true. we all grow and shrink. <laughs> Very true. Okay, Cecilia. I think I'm going to say mistake ribbing, which is a sequence knitting pattern, an old one. And Ooh, uh, not really a mistake ribbing. at all. I kind of like the misnomer. Uh, and mistake you can dress it up ribbing. Like can you tell us a little bit about mistake ribbing? 
It's a it's an ancient pattern. It's a knit two, purl two on a multiple of four plus one or four plus three. And it makes an accordion, a little accordion. And it's reversible and two color striping. And it's a beautiful, beautiful stitch pattern. But I love the I love the misnomer of having mistaken the name. <laughs> I love that. We're and gonna do some research. mistakes. What's that? We're gonna have to do some research on this now. Yes, <laughs> there's a deep dive you know, coming. In the in well, the I, comments below. So we'll definitely we'll find a link to this or something. Maybe do you have one on your website, Cecilia? I do not, but it's an old pattern. It's in Barbara Walker's books. And, you know, Francis mentioned that with sequence knitting, you have to be careful to not make mistakes. And I'm always trying to think about how to make a pattern less mistake prone. So mis the mistaking mistakes are something that I'm always kind of thinking about because it's uh, it's kind of the bane of knitting, right? It's how do you catch a mistake fast and fix it? Yeah, I it's love a beautiful that. stitch pattern. Well, we'll look Whoa. into that. Okay, second question. Um, Brienne, what is your arch nemesis stitch pattern or technique? Um, I don't have one. I love, I would say my arch nemesis with knitting is, um, rules and also just time. There are so many things mm -hmm. to learn. Each new technique I find exciting. I feel like this book is our big pink permission slip to wear bright, bold colors and to just try anything, you know, put any any different, you know, yarns together and um, just, you know, push to express yourself that way. And when we do it, other people feel like they can do it. And I so appreciate that. Thank you. Awesome. Francis. Um, I think I, I was knitting a, a Stephen West um, pattern that had brioche in it and I had made a mistake and fixing a brioche mistake. <laughs> I, feel you. I feel like I'm on that plane too sometimes you know yeah when I have to fix brioche I actually have to get myself organized and be like all right let's set this down and think about this no tvs turned on or anything like that so yeah how about you Sabrina this is really controversial uh because I hate baubles <laughs> I know everybody loves them but mine I think I said this last time mine are never perky enough they they just I, I find that I'm all thumbs trying to make them and I'll knit them, but <laughs> I don't, I, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at brand shirt with like bubbles everywhere. And you <laughs> yeah. just did Andrea, which has I bubbles. <laughs> and I, and I, and I said that on the, the <laughs> video and she was like, Oh, Chuck and <laughs> I'll still put them in. <laughs> okay. How about you, Cecilia? Well, but bobbles are definitely on the list, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I hate mattress seaming. And I, I know really? this is a somewhat controversial position, but I realize that when you're marling or putting strands together, you know, it actually is harder to mattress seam. But I I just I just hate having to think about where to put the needle. So I I do pick up and knit seams and I'm much happier. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right, Julie, we're gonna ask, answer this question too, because I've just changed my answer so what is your arch nemesis stitch pattern or technique julia i was going to say in tarja but this weekend i tried it and it is actually not very complicated i yeah. did only very simple in tarja so starting from one side or from one edge of, or from the other but then you see i did a couple of staggered stripes to just see how i needed to it's it is very, very simple. So it's not in Tarja. I don't know what it is. What about you, Amy? <laughs> um, I want to say lace pattern where you have to do it on the wrong side, right side and wrong side lace knitting. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. You need that break. I need that. I need that rest row. You know, I yeah. really I'm going to try and change yeah. your mind with my new book. Okay. I will take that challenge, Cecilia. I'll wait for the book to come out. <laughs> Well, thanks everyone for joining us today for this episode with the Cecilia Campachero and Brienne Moody from my book, Neons and Neutrals. Um, we will be filming. So all of these are pre-filmed and then released out on YouTube. So I really appreciate you guys joining us for the premiere and thanks for being so chatty in the chat. And we'll see you again for another episode here on Amy's Knit Lab. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.